Well, the test for 2.2 Guardians update is finally up and running, and I've managed to spare some time to jump in so that I can tell my subscribers what to expect. Now, this is only a quick overview, and please keep in mind that what you see here is in beta. Although it's unlikely that any major features will be removed or added at this stage, various things may still change. 2.2 actually adds a lot of new stuff. For example, the planet maps are no longer just blank spheres, but actually show detailed surface features, which is much more visually appealing. The Starport Services UI has also been completely overhauled. It looks a lot less clunky and is more intuitive and easier to use. At least I think so, at any rate. Space Station interiors have also received some love, as more interior variations have been added. For example, this industrial and extraction space station, complete with what appear to be smelting plants. And this, what I think was a high-tech station that I visited at one point. All of this adding much needed visual variety to the game. There are an absolute ton of other things that I could mention. Some of them are gameplay related in nature, others are just there to add variety. But I'll be here all day if I go through them all, so instead I'm just going to put a link to the current patch notes in the video description. It's a pretty long list. For the rest of this video, I'll be concentrating on a few major additions that I think you're most likely to be interested in. First is the ability to transfer ships from elsewhere in space to your current location. This feature has been demanded pretty much since Elite Dangerous' release, and if you've been keeping track of events, you'll know that when the feature was confirmed for 2.2, it set off quite a fierce debate about whether transfer should be instant or feature a delay, with fantastic arguments coming from both sides. As it appears, at least as of this version of the beta, those of us who wanted a delay seem to have won the debate, since as you can see, there is now a transfer time. Transfer times appear to scale depending on how far away the ship is from your current location, and the fee that you have to pay seems to scale with both distance and ship size. If you look at my Sidewinder and my Python, you'll see from their transfer times that they're roughly equally distant from my current location, but the fee for the Python is quite a lot higher, which makes sense because the Python is quite a lot bigger. Using the system is pretty simple, just click, confirm, and wait. You can transfer as many ships at once as you like, and if you like, you can even sell them remotely. I'm quite pleased with it myself, though I would have liked to see the option to choose the destination that your ship is sent to, rather than only being able to send it to your current location, but it's good stuff anyway. There is also the option to store and transfer modules that you don't want to use at the moment, but at the time of recording, this feature hasn't been enabled in the beta just yet. It will, however, be coming in the full version, as far as I know. Next, and I think what most people will be interested in, and I've been looking forward to for a long while, is the addition of fighter craft which you can launch from your ship. It's a pretty good system. There are several prerequisites. A fighter hangar module, a ship large enough to take said module, at present only the Corvette, the Imperial Cutter, the Anaconda, the Type 9 and Beluga, and the Federal Gunship and the Keelback can support fighter bays, which makes sense really, considering the facilities that must be needed to maintain even a small ship. And although the fighter bay I chose only holds one fighter, I think you can get bays that hold up to two. You'll also need, of course, a fighter. There are currently three to choose from, and the one I'll be showing off here is the F-63 Condor, which people may be familiar with from CQC. I haven't found any options to customise the fighter's outfitting, but you can buy several variants with slightly different loadouts, like two beam lasers and a heatsink, or two multi-cannons. I went for the dual beam laser variant. Last, but certainly not least, you'll need a pilot to fly it. You'll find these pilots for hire in the crew lounge section of the space stations. Their cost seems to depend on their skill level, and they require a cut out of any profits that you make, which again, seems to be determined by their skill level. Uh, you can probably see that the expert pilot I hired requires a hefty 12% cut, whereas the mostly harmless pilot only requires a mere 2%. Fighters are very easy to use, really. Just go to the center panel in your cockpit, select the fighter, and deploy it with the pilot. Once she's out, she's pretty much autonomous and will act according to simple orders that you give her, such as act aggressively, act defensively, focus fire on target, that sort of thing, and she handled herself quite well against the target I picked out. 
She didn't handle herself quite so well when I decided to send her off against three heavily armed Federal gunships who, along with their Taipan fighter, kind of creamed her and then blew me apart. And that's not all, you can even take the fighter out yourself and leave the AI pilot to fly your main ship. And it actually piloted the ship fairly well, keeping the enemy occupied while I worked it over with the F-63 surprisingly powerful weaponry. And with that, I have just one more feature to talk about, passenger missions. These have been expected for a fair while, really, and may finally give the Orca a reason to actually exist, along with the new ship, the Beluga. I didn't bother using either, since naturally, I couldn't find the bloody things, so I gave up and just bought a Type 6 instead. Passenger missions are basically like cargo run missions, except the cargo has more specific needs. In place of cargo racks, you have passenger cabins. Three types, in fact. The economy cabins, which house the most passengers who aren't really bothered about luxury. Business class for the slightly more demanding clients, holding about half the capacity of the equivalent economy class cabins. And the luxury class for the most demanding clients, only holding two passengers in this case. The passenger missions are picked up in a similar way to normal missions. Simply go to the passenger lounge, and talk to the travel agents who will give you a list of passenger missions. There are of course limits on which missions you can take, depending on things like your reputation with the agent, or certain system factions and such like, or maybe just how many places of a particular compartment class you have aboard. Passengers are a little more fussy than cargo, as you'll realise when you see these passenger traits, which you have to account for. For example, this one isn't too happy about danger, so if you get shot at and take hull damage, her satisfaction will go down. And I think that when it goes too low, she'll just jump ship in an escape pod. But on the other hand, she's not high risk, so you aren't likely to get shot at by people looking for her. I don't think you really need me to run through the missions, really, do you? Uh, you just do what you would expect to do. You take the passengers where they want to go, tourist beacons in this case, which actually contain interesting snippets of local history, and then back again. According to the patch notes, there's a lot of different types of passengers other than tourists, such as pirates, explorers, VIPs, etc. But they're basically all the same thing, just take them where they want to go. Not the most thrilling mission type, but some may well pay pretty hefty sums, like this chap at the top of the list, who wants to go a good 25,000 light years to Sagittarius, but will pay over 25 million to get there. There are community goals that don't pay that much, Though I don't know if these prices will be the same after beta. Well, with that, I certainly haven't covered everything in the 2.2 update. Again, look at the patch notes and you'll see that it's stonking huge. But overall, I'm impressed with what's been added with this patch, especially the ship transfer and fighter bays. If you're one of those people who's been on the fence about buying the Horizons update pass, I think maybe this is the point where you should really strongly consider delving in, because this, combined with the other stuff that's come out so far, in my opinion, means you won't be wasting your money.